everyone. Thanks for joining us this afternoon for our masterclass on virtual interviewing skills. I will kick off and we'll do Q&A at the end. So please feel free to use the Q&A box uh, just at the bottom of your Zoom screen. So I'm Alex Hadding and I head up People and Culture for Employment Hero. And I'm sure all of you have um, struggled with this new virtual world of interviewing that we're dealing with in remote work. So this afternoon, I thought it'd be great for us to touch on how the candidate experience has changed. How do you prepare for a virtual interview? How do you set the tone? It's also really important to talk about how we sell our purpose and our brand through storytelling. We'll talk about scorecards and question asking and the vital importance of taking notes. So when I reached out to my managers to ask them some of the things that they found the most challenging about virtual interviewing, their biggest challenges were that people enter Zoom formally and they're straight to the point. There's no ice breaking or rapport building that you will find a lot easier in person. Getting a feel for the person as a person, my hiring managers find really hard to have that conversation. Again, back to building rapport. And they've also challenged with finishing an interview early if the person is not the right fit. Um, so quite often, cheekily back in the office, you might have even texted someone to come in and take over if there was a second interview. You can't really necessarily do that. So how do you do it? And how do we sell remote work for candidates who are really over lockdown at the moment and they're just not interested in working for a company that might be remote first? I wanted to just touch on how management philosophy has changed over the decades, because it did take a full decade to go from the industrial corporation to what we call hierarchical leadership, and then another two decades to get to collaborative management, and then a whole nother decade to get to company as a network. Then COVID hit the pandemic, and it only took 12 months for us to move to a whole new approach to management which is where there is such a focus now on empathy, trust, resilience and growth. As managers and leaders, we really need to be focused on the individual within our company and teams, on the community as a whole and on the family. So how has the candidate experience changed now that we're doing everything virtually? It used to be face to face. Now we do remote interviewing and it was all about the location. Now. We really are location agnostic. And if you're not, you need to pivot to this or you will lose candidates as part of losing your EVP. It also used to be very much about cultural fit because everyone was together in the office. Now there's much more of a focus on values fit because we need people to be self-led if they're going to be able to work in a remote first environment. Now, you've conducted hundreds of face-to-face -face interviews. Surely, you just take that experience and apply it to your virtual interviewing over video. Not quite. Uh, you need to um, also look at the benefits of conducting virtual interviews. Would you believe, according to LinkedIn, 81% of talent professionals around the world say that virtual recruiting will continue post-COVID? and 70% say it will become the new standard. Those statistics are huge. It's not going away. So why will it become the norm? Because we've realised as companies we've got time saving and cost savings. Virtual interviews are so much easier to schedule because we're not booking things like meeting rooms. Candidates are also a lot more flexible because they're not having to leave their physical office to come and meet you. But for a lot of teams, this is still a new approach that we need to help our hiring managers embrace. So whether you're a virtual veteran or new to the video space, the good news is that we can use a lot of the same approaches. We just need to tweak a few things to make sure the candidate experience is great and that you're assessing candidates in the same way you could in person. Let's touch on some of the pros and cons. 
One of the negatives is that we're limited to visual cues on the face. We don't get to see body language. We don't get to do things like mirror a candidate to try and get what is out of them. For those of us that look at body language, you can quite often tell if someone's not telling the truth in an in-person interview. It's now location agnostic, which is a massive pro. So anyone can interview anywhere where there's the internet. We're now tell versus show. We used to be able to take people on a tour of the office and showcase our culture, even introduce them to a few people. All of that has gone away. So we have to rely on storytelling. Another pro, easy scheduling and fantastic flexibility for both candidates and hiring managers. And another pro is that video recording is now an option. Just be mindful, if you are going to record an interview, you do need the candidate's permission. We need to focus on the candidate experience more than ever. Would you believe, according to a LinkedIn report, that 43% of candidates actually feel that video interviews cause more stress than in-person interviews? So it's critical that we as hiring managers demystify all of that stress around virtual interviews. How do you do this? Be transparent about who you are. Prepare the candidate for the process. What systems and tools will they be expected to use? Google Meets, Zoom, Teams. Give them a sense of who you are as both a person and an organisation. Showcase your culture and values. And as always, provide feedback in a timely manner. To focus on the candidate experience, we have to be brand aware to sell your culture. So a virtual interview can absolutely be an extension of your brand, just like it used to be when you were in the office. So the look and feel of your interview should align with the culture of your organization. Do you want to use a branded backdrop on your Zoom or video? Or like me, do you want to invite the candidate into your home office? Be really conscious about not being a brand distractor. Make sure you're respectful. You log in on time. Communicate frequently. If you're a hiring manager, get back to your recruiters with feedback as soon as you can. A really good trick that I find is if I have a 45 minute interview booked in, I actually book an hour for that interview to allow me 15 minutes immediately after the interview while everything is fresh in my mind to complete my notes in our ATS system. And also ask the candidate if the process can be improved. You could just say to them, Alex, just before we finish off the interview and say goodbye, do you have any feedback on how your experience could have been improved? Then that point I focused on earlier about being a storyteller. So think and prepare. Why did you join your organisation? What's kept you there? What do you find the most enjoyable? And try to live your values through your storytelling. 60% of job seekers quit in the middle of filling out online job applications because of their length or complexity. That's according to career build out research. That is a huge statistic. So make sure your candidate experience in terms of applying is easy and simple. Here's an example from Employment Heroes Glassdoor page of a bad candidate experience. It was from the 3rd of August. And this person has just put out there to anyone that wants to read it, that their time was wasted during their interview. And that really does do your brand damage and you potentially lose good applicants. So how do you create an awesome candidate experience? Remember, it includes every touch point that you have with the candidate during the hiring process. And candidates review more than just your website. They'll look at your social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Glassdoor reviews. Instagram's a great one to showcase your culture if you're a bit of fun. Have a bit of fun on Instagram so people can get a feel of your culture. Again, aligning the experience to your culture and values and communicate constantly. The best way is through an applicant tracking system. So for example, if there's a holdup in scheduling, sometimes we can't avoid being late, make sure you SMS the candidate to say the hiring manager is on the way. 
An update to say that you're going to be late is better than silence and having someone sitting alone looking at themselves on a video. Respond to every candidate or you do risk brand damage, like that example I showed you on Glassdoor. Respond to candidates who didn't make it past your screening. This is now automated through applicant tracking systems. And more vital, if a candidate has taken the time to interview with you and then not successful, get back to them with feedback. Even if it is as simple as you are above budget, you didn't have the exact experience that we needed and we went with someone who has SaaS technology experience, for example. And it's also great if you can have an integration with paperless onboarding. So can you make a candidate an offer? They're excited. And then within five minutes, they can check their inbox and they have their formal contract of offer sitting there. And paperless onboarding is even more important now that we are working remotely. Imagine being a candidate and being able to onboard before you even start with the company. What a fantastic new starter experience. I wanted to review our remote interview process to give you an idea of what we're doing here at Employment Hero. So we have hiring managers have their business case approved by the head of their department, people and culture, and our CFO. Once approved, our great talent acquisition team get the job posting up and hiring managers have access to all applicants as well. In terms of hiring, we do interviews and testing. And we want to work out who's going to be the best fit. We use Google Meets as our technology solution. Once we've found someone, we tend to make a verbal offer based on successful references. We want that candidate to know immediately that we want them on our team. Then we re do reference checks and then we issue them with their formal contract. Then our teams work together to get cracking with a great onboarding process that they then share with the new starter so that the new starter knows exactly what to expect in their first day and week. And we also send out a really fantastic branded welcome pack. This not only makes a new person feel welcome, it showcases our own culture and our own values through a few of the fun things that are in there, as well as a welcome card from both our CEO and a handwritten one from their new manager. The tools that we use. We use a great ATS system, applicant tracking system, which allows for asynchronous review of candidates. Asynchronous means that you don't have to be in the same time zone and you don't have to talk live. So we can tag hiring managers, we can tag managers more senior up if we want feedback and hiring managers can tag the talent acquisition manager working on that particular candidate. You can include scorecards of questions. This is really important because you don't want candidates to be asked the same questions by every hiring manager in every different step of the process. It really says to the candidate, you haven't prepared you obviously have not read any of the notes because I've been asked this question three times. An ATS also integrates with your Google or Microsoft calendar. So when you send a candidate a meeting invite, it automatically enters into your own calendar. Now, just be mindful of this if you're using a calendar in a company that's super transparent like us. We all share our calendars with everybody else. So you need to then pop into your calendar and make it private to make sure that you are keeping the candidate's personal information and name confidential. Again, we use Google Meets, easy integration with our Google Calendar. And also, pretty much everyone knows how to use Google Meets, so you're taking some of that nervousness, unknown or anxiety away from the candidate for their process of virtual interviewing. We do also use some online testing for particular roles. So Jules is going to launch a poll, which is how many of you on the webinar today are using an applicant tracking system? Just give a minute or two for everybody to answer.
and our results are in. So I'm just trying to get it across to my screen. Oh, Jules, would you be able to launch the... So 34% are saying yes, 59% are saying no, and 6% are saying, I don't know. So for those people who aren't using it, we actually have an ATS functionality within Employment Hero now. So if you are a customer on this call, please reach out to support or even look on our Harry bot within the platform to have a look on how to get started with an ATS. It really saves so much time and you're not going to the back end of Seek the back end of LinkedIn and the back end of Indeed, you are going to one place that shares everything. And again, you're able to communicate asynchronously with hiring managers and your talent team, which is really important. Interviewing, the challenges and the need to tell our story. Remember that statistic from the LinkedIn survey, the importance of preparation. 43% of candidates think video interviews are more stressful than in person. So why do we need to prepare? It ensures a positive candidate experience. There's nothing worse than starting off an interview with, can you tell me about your career history? It just shows that you haven't read a resume. You want to give a good sense of the role. So by preparing, you're able to articulate a lot more effectively as to what the role entails and what does success look like. Preparation also means that you give a really good sense of your company, your values, your culture. How do you collaborate in this virtual world? What tools do you use? Do you have a cadence of meetings and do you do social fun events? All of these things are really important to people joining in a remote world of work. You also want to be able to talk about who you are. Again, you don't have that in-person rapport. You can't take the candidate on an office tour. And by preparing, you're giving the candidate a better sense of what you are looking for. Here's some things that we look for in our heroes that we hire here. It's really important for us to look for people who are hungry, humble, and smart. This comes from a book by Patrick Leonocci called The Ideal Team Player. Patrick poured years of research to find out were there traits that made someone an ideal team player. And in this remote world of work, being a team player, whilst it's one of our values, we've noticed that it's more important than ever. You rely on your team to be able to get your results. So what does humble mean? It means that the candidate and the person have humility and they put others ahead of themselves. So for example, they'd never take credit for someone else's work. So they don't have pride, ego or arrogance. Now don't confuse a lack of confidence for humility. Hungry. What does it look like for someone to be hungry? They have an innate drive. And what does that lead to? A strong work ethic. And it leads to them being a self-leader, which is so important if you're going to succeed as a remote worker. Smart. I don't mean IQ smart. I mean emotional intelligence a common sense of understanding and understanding others. As we work remotely, we are very reliant on video or huddle calls or phone calls, or you might do a walking one-on-one. -on -one. You need to be able to pick up clues and cues from other team members, direct reports, or even your own manager. So you need to have EQ. It also brings out the best in others if you hire people with strong EQ. So how do you find hungry, humble and smart candidates? You need to ask the questions that probe in to these qualities in a person. Are they curious? Which means they have a growth mindset. Ask them how they stay ahead of trends in their particular function. Are they a self-starter? Ask them how they learn. It also shows if they've got good project management. Ask them for an example of a project they've led or started or even participated in remotely. You want them to have good communication skills, both written and verbal. And how do they treat people and understand people? 
A really good question here can be, how have you handled a situation when someone in your team has annoyed you? Or have you ever been given feedback about when you've done something that's annoyed another team member? There's, this is a great pre-interview checklist. I find it really good to just run through these little pointers before and while you're preparing for your interview. So review their resume, review the other interview scorecards that have happened before you're about to interview. You don't want to ask the same question. And more importantly, there might be something there that's highlighted that you want to do a deeper dive into. Speak to your recruiter to see if there's any additional information that should be dug into. Test your technology, that's really, really important, and your internet um, access or speed. And make sure your candidate has been given all the information they need. And pick your space for the interview. It's not great if you're interviewing in your bed, for example. Some of us are absolutely confined to our bedrooms at the moment because we're sharing houses or working in an apartment with our partner. So then put a fake background on so that you're not showing an unprofessional uh, view of yourself. And practice a bit of a pitch or practice things like storytelling. What is it that drew you to your organisation? What keeps you there? Those types of stories. A compelling company culture pitch. So according to the former head of LinkedIn recruiting, the, there is an opportunity to differentiate yourself as a company by telling a compelling story. Remember, you can't take people on an office tour. So you need to talk about your mission and purpose and vision and try to tie that back to the individual that you're interviewing. So think about how you can showcase it. Is there something you'd love about leadership at your organisation? That's a great story to tell. If you're inspired by the strategy and the way your leaders interact with everyone in the company, that is a really compelling company to join. Talk about your own team. Do you have stellar team members and you do great team building and career development? Talk about your team. Showcase them. Make sure you do talk about your purpose. Research is showing more and more that candidates and people want to join a purpose-driven company. They want their job to have meaning. This has been exasperated by COVID and lockdowns. And try to tell human stories. If you tell stories from your heart, they're really inspirational. Top weeks candidates want to learn about your company culture. This is pre-COVID. A whopping 51% responded by saying an office visit is how they feel that they learn best about a company's culture. The hiring manager is the next biggest influencer on company culture. Other employees, your company website, and also recruiters. So if you are the hiring manager, remember how influential you are during the interview process. And then that statistic, 46% around other employees. Something we do as part of our interview process is have a candidate meet a couple of individual contributors from the team that they will be working with without the hiring manager on the call. This allows the candidate to ask questions like, talk to me about how Alex is a manager. Talk to me about the team. How do you team build in this virtual world? Talk to me about some of the fun things you do socially as a company. How does leadership communicate to the rest of the company? They're the types of questions on a candidate's mind in this virtual world that they might not be confident enough to ask the hiring manager. And also, they know that the answers from the team members or their potential next team members are going to be authentic and truthful. How to prepare your candidates in this virtual world of interviewing. So here's an example of what we send out to make sure our candidates are super prepared for their interviews. We send out the LinkedIn profile of the hiring manager they're hiring with, and we give them some tips, especially if they're in an entry level or a junior role. We tell them to learn their resume, know their numbers if they're in a sales role or know their projects if they're going into a product or engineering role. 
to prepare questions. Questions really show your interest in a role. To reflect on their communication style and to do some research. We make doing that research early by sending them some links. We send them the link to our story. We send them some articles from our CEO and founder, Ben Thompson. We send them a link to our values and case studies so they can actually see what our customers say about us. We also, if they want to go a step further, we send them demo videos of our product. This is really important if someone's moving into a product-based role. We send them demos of our payroll product and also videos from our YouTube channel. Another poll that Jules is going to launch. Have you developed and shared a compelling company pitch with your hiring managers? Or if you're a hiring manager, has your recruiting team developed and shared a compelling company pitch with you to help you on your journey of hiring the right people remotely? I'll just give one sec for everyone to answer that. In poll, share results. I'll see if I can share. I don't think I can share it with you again. So yes, was well, twenty six percent, which is great. I expected that to be lower. Forty two said no, and thirty two percent no, but I want to. So both that thirty two percent and forty two percent, I urge you to ask your talent team to help you come up with a company pitch and stories that you can tell during the process. You can tell the same story to every candidate, keep in mind they're different, but telling those stories is really important. It also makes you quite unique because a lot of managers don't think to do this. During the interview. So remember that statistic I talked about earlier, a lot of my managers, hiring managers, find it really hard to develop rapport over a video. So set the tone and agenda. Remember to introduce yourself. Don't just say hi and launch straight into questions or hi, nice to meet you, tell me about your career history. Introduce yourself. Say how long you've been at the organisation, maybe what drew you to the organisation or a career development story from you being in the organisation. Be engaged and remember to smile. Sometimes we forget. So try to make your camera smaller, which you can do with layout in Google Meets or in Teams or in Zoom so that you're not looking at yourself and distracted. Make sure you turn your other monitor off unless you're taking notes in your ATS system, in which case I say to the candidate, oh, Alex, when I look at my other screen, I'm just taking notes from our interview in our applicant tracking system so that the candidate knows that when I'm looking at my other monitor, I am not not interested in them. I'm taking notes from the interview. Remember to take notes. That's a really big tip, especially if you're um, going to come back and finish the notes later. It's really important. And if you're interviewing more than one candidate in the same day, take those notes. Even if you jot down a note of what the person might be wearing, if you know you might not get to it until the next day, that can jog your memory. Purple shirt, cream top, um, glasses, anything that might jog your memory. Be flexible and understanding. If someone's having technical issues, for example, put yourself in their shoes. They're stressing out. They're already stressed. Tell them to calm down. You've got plenty of time and start to troubleshoot. So I always have a Zoom meeting request on hand because quite often Google Meets will have a glitch and I can't hear the candidate and they might not know Google Meets very well. So I go to the chat box and I just say, do you have Zoom as an application? I'll meet you in this Zoom number in two minutes. And then we jump into Zoom and we do the interview on Zoom. So having a backup can be really important. Ask the right questions. Make sure you know what you cannot ask from a legal perspective. So you can't ask questions related to age, relationship status, political views. And make sure you frame your questions the right way. You don't want an interview to appear one-sided and you're just hammering the candidate with questions. Make sure you also leave time at the end for the candidate to ask questions. This is really vital. It's also very insightful as to the type of questions a candidate asks. They've really done their homework if they ask questions that are about the culture about how you manage, about the number of people on the team, about career development opportunities. That shows that they're really interested in a long-term career with you. And be really transparent. 
give them an idea. So for example, we tell them what the culture is like at Employment Hero, we work hard and we play hard so that they know they're coming into a very fast moving organisation where there are very high standards and outline the best next steps and always be brand aware. These are some examples and our fabulous marketing team will send this deck out to you so that you'll have these on hand. But you do need to now check for what we refer to as remote readiness. Is the candidate that you want to bring into your organisation able to be incredibly effective, productive and a team player from home? So some good questions are why do you want to work from home or remotely? Have you ever worked with a distributed team? And ask for examples. How did you make sure the team were team building? How do you switch off from work is an important one. And have you ever worked independently? Or ask them what technology, strategy and tools they use. Is there a project management tool they've used in the past? Also ask them what they struggled with when COVID first hit over 18 months ago. And how did they improve that area of struggling? So for us, we hear lots of stories about burning out, logging on early, feeling like you have to be on 24-7 because everyone else is on Slack, feeling incredibly stressed by an application like Slack. So ask them what they did to overcome that struggle. Another good one is what excites someone about working remotely. It might be having deep time to think to switch off Slack and work on a project and get it done with a lot better quality than you would have in a noisy open plan office. And also ask someone how they would deal with someone in a different time zone if they needed information quickly, or if someone was dropping the kids at school and taking advantage of remote work, how would you solve the problem? Notes are really important. Our brain can't remember everything. So take down notes, responses to the questions, and if you don't have an applicant tracking system, set up a shared document for the candidate so that everyone involved in the process can read and review your notes. Talk about their communication style, because that's really important for everyone in the hiring process and really important if they're going to be effective working in a remote environment, their verbal communication skills and their body language over video is really important to their success. Notes should be specific. So don't just write something like, Can, uh, Shane wasn't a culture fit. Say why. Shane didn't come across as humble, so would not fit into our culture or be a team player. It also helps us give feedback to candidates and improves their experience. Whilst feedback can be hard to hear, you would be surprised at the end of giving feedback to someone who's taken the time to prepare to interview with you. They actually appreciate it because they're able to go away and work on that. And remember, if you're down to two candidates, note-taking can help decision-making between those two candidates. And something that we found, if, if a candidate was a close hire, they were the second in line, we've actually been able to go back and re-engage with that second in line candidate when a new role opening of the same role has come up and we've been able to extend an offer successfully, which is fantastic, saves time and money. So how can everyone involved in the hiring process help virtual hiring be more efficient? Use scorecards. So have a template. If you don't have an ATS system, which a lot of you don't, create scorecards per role. If you're a hiring manager, on those scorecards, give hints for the answers that you're looking for. This makes the recruiter's life so much easier. So if you are asking a candidate in customer success about um, what metrics they use to measure customer success, let your recruiter know you're looking for metrics like NPS and CSAT scores so that they know when someone is giving the right answer and they're a fit for the role. Block some placeholders in your manager if you're a hiring manager. This helps with scheduling enormously because at the end of an interview, you can say, oh, Julia, we'd love to move you to next steps. Let me just pull up Dave's calendar. He's available on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. Can I book you in? And then you can book in the next interview straight away. So if you are a hiring manager, 
put those blocks in your calendar at least three days a week. And if you're a recruiter, ask your hiring manager to put those blocks in place so that you can hire, you can book in the next step and the next interview before you finish that interview. Remember to show up on time, make sure you've got a sensible background, prepare. Also, sharing your open roles on LinkedIn is huge because you've got a big network and you might find that other people in the network ping up and think, I know someone who would be great for that job. And ask candidates to leave a Glassdoor review or when someone starts with you, ask them to put in a Glassdoor review because candidates more and more are checking Glassdoor. You'd be surprised at how many of our candidates actually mention Glassdoor reviews and they give specifics showing that they have checked Glassdoor and they will ask you about a bad review. Here's an example of some great Glassdoor reviews, five stars that we have received. And this is where we've had people actually ask new hires to leave a Glassdoor review and it makes a big difference. So the next poll, are you keeping an eye on your Glassdoor reviews? I'll just give a minute for everyone to answer. So 22% are, 48% are not, and 30% are asking what Glassdoor is. That's great. Um, so congratulations to the 22% who are. For the 48% who are not, ask your recruitment team to, one, keep an eye on Glassdoor. They just need to put a weekly reminder in their calendar, which I have, and also ask your recruitment team to ask new hires if they are happy, could they please leave a review? And those who don't know what Glassdoor.com is, it's an anonymous website for employees and candidates to leave reviews about your company. Now, you can never avoid having negative reviews. If you've terminated an employee, of course, they're going to leave a negative review. Just be prepared to be really transparent during the interview process if you get the question. So I've actually said, look, you have to understand when someone's given specifics about a negative glass door review, that not every employee has the most perfect experience. That was an example of a disgruntled employee who left that review. And we're going to send out additional resources, 101 remote interviewing questions, also a course on virtual interviews, it's only 15 minutes, LinkedIn, tips on conducting virtual interviews, um, and also how they do it at GitLab. GitLab is a real leader in remote work. And also some more detail around that hungry, humble and smart, which is from Patrick Leonocci's book, Are You an Ideal Team Player? He did so many years of research to come up with those three particular attributes that you want in an ideal team player. I highly recommend reviewing it. So now we will move to Q&A. There seems to be five questions. Um, ATS, yes. So, um, Tonya, fantastic. If you go to the menu on the left-hand navigation side, you'll see it under recruitment. Is the ATS necessary for a small scale company? It does make things more efficient. Um, it was life changing for me when I started to use an ATS. And it means in this remote world of work that you can communicate asynchronously where people can do it in their own time. So it allows for more flexibility. You can get really cheap ATS systems um, or you can use ours if, if you're a uh, client. And from Kelly Murphy, how do you smoothly go from being the hiring manager conducting the interview to then being a team member on the video? Okay, great question. So we schedule an hour and I jump in with the hiring manager. Let's just say this is for um, a sales manager. So James Keen and I will jump in and we will interview this particular candidate and we will know at half past, we will set the tone, let the candidate know that at exactly half past, James and I are jumping off and two new team members are jumping into the Google Meets. We make sure we stop at 20 past to allow 10 minutes for the candidate to ask questions. And generally, good timing, the two team members zoom in just as we're leaving. If not, we will say, we're going to jump off now. It's been great to meet you, Julia. Um, go and grab yourself a glass of water. The two team members will be on within five minutes. 
is it appropriate to ask about vacation status? Yes, you can. You can just say to someone, in terms of planning, um, you're looking like a really positive candidate. I just wanted to ask, do you have any upcoming holidays planned so that I can plan around it? Is there a scorecard in the Employment Hero ATS? No, there's not. However, with this pack, Nerida, we will send out really good examples of questions for you. So, um, yeah, use those and um, reach out to the marketing team. Kelly, again, we have no reviews on Glassdoor. Would you recommend encouraging this? I would be thinking no reviews are better than negative ones. Kelly, no reviews are absolutely better than negative ones. However, no reviews kind of show that you're maybe not that are uh, into your employer brand proposition. Now, don't spam the company and say, can everyone leave a Glassdoor review? Because then it looks obvious because you go onto Glassdoor and absolutely everyone has left a review on Wednesday, the 22nd of September by 5 p.m. Try and go function by function and try and pick out some employees that you know are really happy, really engaged and performing well. You know they're going to leave a good review. It's anonymous and you'll absolutely start to get an uptake on it. Um, you should, well, an employee may have set up a Glassdoor review. If not, just go on and uh, go onto glassdoor.com and type in search, how do I set up a company page? Anonymous, how would you recommend dealing with people who are late to remote interviews? Give them the feedback. Ask the candidate for feedback about the interview and then go back and say, Alex, I've got to give you some pretty blunt feedback. You've been late to an interview five times. The candidate hasn't had a good experience and it's also damaging our brand. You just have to be candid. Next one, is it appropriate? Oh, we did that, vacation status. How would you best ask a new starter to make a review on Glassdoor? Easy, just ping them. We tend to ping them over Slack. Um, it's usually best done by the recruiter because they've had the most interaction with the recruiter throughout the process and it's always very positive interaction. So just say to them, you know, it might be a bit cheeky of me to ask you so early, Alex, but would you mind jumping onto Glassdoor? We don't have very many reviews. We'd really love to hear from you. And generally people will do it. Um, COVID vac status? No, you can't ask about that um, unless you're in within a tier or a company where it's required, um, such as the government has stipulated that as, um, healthcare workers have to have a, a vaccination. Uh, you, you can't ask that. Uh, will it be appropriate to check the candidate current salary, giving them a salary scale for the role? Absolutely. Um, so we quite often ask as part of the application process, what are your salary expectations? And we ask it in um, a fun way. So we say, look, we don't want to waste each other's time. What are your minim minimum salary requirements? You can also ask a candidate during the virtual interview, what's your current salary package? and what are your expectations? Keep in mind they're two different things. Some people um, might be happy to take a pay cut for a more flexible job. Others might be looking um, to increase their salary for um, you know, their means of living. How do you can keep control of the meeting? This was not a job interview, but an interview on behalf of the board. Employees were late, no apologies. She st stood by the camera and was bending up and down. Answers were not focused in the end. I asked her what on earth she was doing. She looked at me surprised and said, I was folding my washing. Yeah, so um, I would ping the entire company in that case and ping them reminders about remote work and appropriate behavior on camera. We're still working. Um, so I would even put in there, whilst we support remote work and working from home, folding your washing during a meeting is inappropriate behaviour. Call it out. You're not naming the person. Everyone will know who it was, uh, but just call it out and, um, you know, ping everyone. In regards to how would you best ask a new starter to make a review on Glassdoor? Um, yeah, again, ping them and just say it might be a little bit cheeky for me to ask so early, Alex, but we need some more Glassdoor reviews. If you had a good experience, I would love it and appreciate it if you could jump on and leave a review. What is the best way to split interview responsibilities between people and operation teams at startups? Well, a lot of startups don't even have a people and culture team or recruitment team. Quite often it's outsourced to agencies. If you have someone in-house, then put a, a workflow or a process together. So first touch point after resumes have been screened should be, um, which is just screening literally the, the online application. It should be the people and culture or talent team going and doing a video interview with that person. And then they move on to the hiring manager as the next part of the process. 
Um, we don't monitor indeed. Um, if a candidate were to bring it up, we would. The next question, what steps are you taking to ensure accessibility during remote interviews? Hard of hearing, not familiar with technology. Again, you have to be really patient. And Isabel, I'm not sure if you're referring to the people interviewing or the candidates, but if it's the candidate, then just be patient, troubleshoot with them and have a backup. As I said, I've got a Zoom meeting number ready to put into Google Meet's chat if there is technology issues so that we can jump onto Zoom straight away. If it's your hiring managers and you're getting feedback from candidates, have a lunch and learn or a session on videoing and virtual interviewing and go through the basic steps of technology. Some managers aren't yet used to how to troubleshoot if their microphone is external versus using um, a headset. So those type of simple things um, can be taught. The next one, regarding setting up candidates with other employees to understand more of the company, would you suggest this setup prior to onboarding them or after they are hired? We actually do it during part of the recruitment process. We let the candidate know that they're going to meet a couple of team members to make it efficient. It will back on to another interview so that they can go in straight away and then they can prepare questions. When is the right time to ask their, um, oh gosh, never ask a candidate for a salary slip. Um, you are starting with distrust uh, of that person to start with. Um, a reference you do, we do after a verbal offer, you have to ask someone what their salary expectations are and you have to place that trust in them. Um, asking them to give proof of what they're earning doesn't show a culture of trust, unfortunately. Is it okay for the candidate to refuse to disclose their current salary? Absolutely. Um, it also would be illegal for me, for example, to give out an ex-employee or current employee salary without their written permission to disclose that confidential information. The next question, what's the longest time you'll wait for the candidate if they don't turn up before rescheduling? Again, have all the information handy. So have their phone number handy and either ping the recruiter straight after five minutes or text the candidate straight away. Alex, I'm waiting on Google Meet, so you're having trouble getting in. Um, and then I would just multitask um, and do something else. Really good example, yesterday I had something scheduled um, and someone had something personal come up. And so I multitasked that whole time. I just had the video on in the background in case they jumped in and I stayed there for the whole half hour. However, I was working the whole half hour. Next one, do you recommend video screening as a substitute for phone screen? Absolutely. Um, again, life changing from my own personal perspective, what you can gauge from seeing someone on a screen compared to seeing them on a uh, to just having them on the phone is really, really incredible. Yes, it's more time consuming, you can't multitask. But what that in fact does on the positive is it makes you focus 100% on the person, their answers, their communication style, you will weed out so many more candidates during the screening process. Why conduct reference checks after a verbal offer? Ah, great question. Simple statistics. It's really unusual to get bad reference checks. Uh, it's also showing trust in the candidate. And if you say to a candidate, Alex, we want to offer you the job, the details, you know, the role is this, the salary is that, it's contingent on good reference checks, that candidate is not going to accept the job if they don't have good references. So you're kind of playing their bluff as well. Um, Kelly, no, it's not. Um, you can um, absolutely back out of a verbal offer. What are your top tips with negotiating salary for the candidate at the verbal offer stage? Oh, that's a great question. So if someone's over budget at the screening stage, it's best to be upfront with them. And I will quite often say, oh my gosh, um, I don't want to waste your time or my time. You're quite above budget for this role. Can we talk about your expectations? And can I tell you about the perks that we offer as an organisation so that we're on the same page? And then after you talk about the perks, ask them what their um, expectation would be now for the salary. So if you're offering flexible work, if you're offering discounts on things like groceries and petrol and gym memberships and health benefits, are they willing to take a cut in salary? You'd be really surprised. How do you get out of a verbal offer if the reference check doesn't um, check out? Uh, a verbal offer, you simply send them the references and say, uh, we're not, we are um, rescinding the offer because your references didn't meet our expectations. Um, and if 
you get a bad reference, ask the person who's giving the reference permission to share their reference. So that means you can also send that reference to the candidate so that they're seeing what is being said about them. Um, I can't think of too many human beings who would um, want to work for a company that's rescinded an offer. Are you able to not offer due to references? Yes, absolutely. Um, again, try and get permission from the person giving the reference to share those details so that you can send them to the candidate. I think we have run a little bit over time, but thank you everyone for joining us. This has been a fantastic session. I've really enjoyed it and um, hope to do some more. And um, I hope everyone is coping okay in lockdown. Um, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another until we are on the other side of this and things will be much more optimistic when we get back to work. Have a great afternoon, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you again on the next webinar. Bye.